The AP always wants to know what the people think, what they're feeling, how they're going to vote, what their issues are. It's important for people to hear about the issues and understand the election. It's important to listen to voters, understand what they're thinking and feeling so that they can participate in the democratic process and we can accurately report their perspectives during our reporting on election coverage. My name is Jer Jerry Chen. At CHUNG is my last uh, Chinese family name. And uh, I was born and uh, raised up in China. And I came to the States actually uh, some about uh, 30 some years ago. Years ago, my father told me, uh, say, this country, like uh, uh, as Lincoln said, uh, by the people, for the people, of the people. I never realized, I never had a feeling until I came to this country. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, it's totally new experience to me, and for a lot of immigrants as well, I guess. I do have some uh, uh, worry and considerations about uh, especially two Republican candidates who, who might take away some of the, uh, the rights, the basic rights, for especially toward uh, minority groups, uh, because I'm one of the <laughs> minority groups. Uh, so I, of course I'm concerned about that. America, United States of America is uh, like a big uh, experiment uh, lab. You know what I'm saying? Uh, such a system is seldom to be uh, able to in other countries. So uh, that's uh, great. It's uh, worthwhile. <laughs> One of the great things about America, and one of the great things about our republic, is that we do get to vote. My name is Tony Rogita. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Kansas Young Republicans, and I work in research and development. And I'm here at the Indian Creek Library uh, in Olathe, Kansas. Here in Johnson County, I think inflation is a huge issue that we're dealing with right now. Over the last two years, the uh, our grocery bill has risen from $400 a month to uh, about 1200 right now. Yeah, our kids have gotten a little older and my, my brother moved in, so there's other variables, but that's been a big thing for us and for and co-workers who their bill has uh, doubled as well. Um, so inflation is a, a huge issue. And then uh, some of the more local issues regarding schools, education, um, those are some other big issues as well. Some of the policies that the left is, is pushing right now are very much out of the mainstream, um, are not family friendly. I've got a, a two-year-old daughter. I, I want her to be able to play um, sports one day and not get picked on by a dude. Um, uh, and um, I think the left is trying to normalize a lot of this, whether it's in the schools or on the sports field. Um, and that's really concerning to me, as well as just the cost of, of living. Um, I mean, I'm extremely grateful for the freedoms that we have because of our democratic republic. Um, we're, we're blessed to live in the United States. I, I love this country, and um, when I think of our um, republic, if you will, I, I think of my family, my, my friends, and all the blessings that we have here. My name is Emma Scott Laven. I identify as a transgender woman. We are at Old Nick's Pub in Eugene, Oregon, which was recently the site of protests by um, Proud Boys and others against Drag Queen Story Hour. I was like, I need to go there and I need to show up in presence. I need to see if I can make a difference in this in this theater that I was pretty certain was going to happen and seemed like it was happening. And I got the opportunity to stare deep into the eyes of hatred. I got to experience what it was to have someone say, I have absolutely no interest in connecting with you. So there may be a lot of people who see this 
and say, this person, this person, is everything that's wrong with America right now. But my response to that is, if you already know who and what I am, or you think you know, then how can you possibly learn anything from me? If you already know everything, or think you know everything, or believe that you know everything, how is it possible to learn? And I'll take it even a step further and say, you know, if you, if you believe that your religion tells you that you know everything, and you know what other people are, then your religion is preventing you from learning and growing as a person. My right to exist is the biggest political issue for me right now. It's on the ballot. I think it's always kind of been on the ballot, but now it's at the forefront. And it's really unfortunate to me that that is the issue because I honestly think that there are way bigger things than concern about transgender people that we really need to be looking at in this country. I am a registered Democrat, but I also will change if I feel a better per they have a better politician running. My name is Mary Elledge, and uh, in 1986, our only son was murdered in Oregon City, in our home. It was so unbearable to lose a child that way. I wanted to do whatever I could for other people. And, and it helps you as well when you're having a problem, if you can help other people. So we, um, uh, I became involved in, in Parents of Murdered Children. I believe that, that um, being soft on crime is what's caused a lot of this. We had worked for years when my son was first murdered, got a lot of good bills passed, and, and now they're all been broken down. There's just some of our, our politicians don't believe in, in institutionalizing people. And the, our governor, one of the people running for governor, um, she is an independent, and I have known of her and know, have talked to her years and years ago, right after my son was first murdered, and she is totally outstanding with victims of crime. I hope that, that Trump isn't allowed to run, run again. I think some of the things he's done, well, this January 6th is his responsibility. He is, he is what caused it. And it's just a miracle that more people, really a miracle more people weren't killed. My name is Mark Regal. I'm a draftsman, and I live in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. I wish that third party would come in and say, like, yes, we're, we're fiscally conservative. We don't want to spend the budget, increase inflation, increase the deficit. But then again, we're like women's issues or, or you know, progressive like there and, and the women's issues, LGBT rights fund, legalize. I would say legalize all narcotics. I don't take part in that. I'll go on the record and say that, but I'd say legalize it. And that definitely clean up our border with you know, Mexican cartels. You vote, and uh, it's the majority rule. That's what democracy is. And I always think I always make the fine distinction between democracy and a republic, because people say that the United States is a democracy. At least in my eyes, it's it's more of a republic. It's more of a constitutional republic. That the democracy can be run away. You can have the rule of the majority be just as bad as the rule of monarch, which is the rule of one. I think we have to be smarter. I think we have to realize that the other side is not the enemy because we seem to be like uh, becoming like children and infantilizing the other side or de uh, dehumanizing the other side. They're kind of saying uh, that uh, they're, they're, they're evil. Well, certainly they're not evil, we just don't agree with them. My name is Cynthia Jones. I'm doing my second master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. Um, I am doing my internship. I should graduate in March of 2023. Our parents 
walked up and down the street, picketing, fighting, a lot of people dying because they couldn't have an abortion. You overturned 50 years? I was 15 when they voted Roe versus Wade and it won. So, before then, you had to go to back alleys. And that doesn't make any sense. So you putting all women, not black, all women at a risk. I will vote for a Republican. I mean, I go on a person's ethics. If you have bad moral and bad ethics, you're not going to do anything good. If you don't vote, if you don't do the right thing, you can't complain. registered Democrat and I've already voted. I did a mail-in ballot that I mailed in a couple days ago. My name is Sally Casey and I presently live in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Pittsburgh. Well, to be perfectly candid, I've been very concerned about Donald Trump since 2016 because um, I saw things about him, his temperament, his demeanor, his attitude, that I thought looked like somebody who could put our democracy at risk. To tell you how worried I am about democracy is the, the second issue is the right reproductive rights, the right to abortion. You know, that that has been lost. Now that, um, Roe v. Wade was settled while I was in high school, when I was in a Catholic high school, all-girl high school, and I wasn't so engaged about that. But certainly by the time I went to college, you know, I became really interested in feminist issues and, you know, went with friends from here after I moved here to try to uh, get the Equal Rights Amendment passed, you know, unsuccessfully. But, um, I certainly understand, too, that the issue of abortion is way more complicated than politicians make it. And the last people in the world that I think should be making decisions about women and what they can do with their bodies are politicians. Yes, democracy is fragile and it takes all of us to, in our institutions, to make it thrive. My name is Ron Flores. Uh, I'm from Huntington Beach, California. That's where I currently live. But I uh, grew up in Placentia and Santa Ana. I've lived in Orange County most of my life. Uh, my family is from Michoacan, Mexico. Uh, we're not Mexicans, we're Budapache Indians. And uh, I'm very proud of that. Personally for me in this election, the most important thing to me is what I experience with the people I'm working with is uh, financial. A lot of people are hurting, uh, religion, and law. Uh, there's lawless, in Santa Ana, lawlessness is a crime. Murder, 22, 23%, and crime is 55%. Even in Huntington Beach where I live, it's going up. And a lot of that has to do with the defunding the police things that happen. Not all of it, but some of it. So this can be fixed. What's missing is the following. Courageous leadership, organization, a plan, and implementation of the plan. I think we're lacking that. I don't, I, we're fragmented, uh, and the people are doing whatever they want because it's out of control. It's beyond me that we're in this situation. How can it be? Well, because we have not voted for the right people.
Uh, yeah, please. I'm... All right. My name is Brian Montez. I use he/her pronouns. I am a junior at Portland State University. I am majoring in political science with a minor in global and international studies. Currently, I am the chief of staff for the Associated Students of Portland State University, being PSU's student government. I am a first-generation student, first-generation American. I am openly gay. I'm a person of color. What's my biggest issue as a voter? I would say that would be protecting our democracy. Truly, uh, it is one of those things that I think is paramount. We can't really fix climate change. We can't, you know, help the healthcare system. We can't bring relief to students across this country until we have faith in our democracy. It's it's as simple as that. Because then we can't really vote in the people who we want to vote in. We can't have these debates. We can't talk it out and, and find a compromise until we secure our democracy. What happened, I think, in January 6th is the biggest manifestation of these forces in our country, of what I believe to be the utmost, the, of the utmost importance. It, it's to the point that a lot of what's going on in politics is just really fundamentally personal. One of my professors here at PSU really talks about how the personal is a political. And I've always thought about that saying, but I, I do believe that to be true the more experiences I have just out there in the real world. And you see, the thing is, is that if you come across somebody with an opposing political view, oftentimes before it would just be as simple as that, an opposing political view, they have a different perspective as to why or how we can better our country. Now it is whether or not somebody believes you have a right to be here whether or not somebody believes you have a right to exist. And that is deeply personal.